Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at a very new budget knife from Best Tech, and this one here is none other than the Best Tech Titan. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. I also want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by White Mountain Knives. Look them up for all of your knife and EDC needs. Use this code right here, WSW10, to say Save 10% off any purchase you make from White Mountain Knives. Now, I'm pretty excited to talk about this knife today. Um, Best Tech, I kind of have a, a, I wouldn't say love-hate relationship, but it, like I feel like there's some people that just love almost every knife Best Tech comes out with. That's not me. I, I do like some Best Tech knives. There have been a few come out in the past year or so that I have been a huge fan of, but there's also been some that I, I wasn't very fond of. Um, this one is leaning towards the very positive side and for a lot of reasons, I, I, I'll say right up front, I kind of, uh, I came for the design and stayed for the action is the best way to describe this knife. Not that, uh, I kind of fell out of love with the design. I still am a big fan of this design, but when, oh, the action on this knife, whoo, whoo, wait till we get to that. Um, but first let's go over some overall specs. We have an overall length of 6.88 inches, a blade length coming in at 2.95 inches, <clears throat> excuse me, with a blade width coming in at 823 thousandths, with a blade thickness at 119 thousandths. Blade material on this guy is D2 with a Tonto style blade, a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 3.95 inches, a handle thickness at 441 thousandths with a handle width at 863 thousandths. Handle material on this guy, as you can see, is G10 and it comes in a lot of different colors of the G10 as well as in some non-coated blade options. We have a liner lock locking mechanism with a right hand only tip up carry. You don't see that a whole lot on budget knives. I mean, you do sometimes, but typically budget knives allow for right and left. This one is not for a good reason that we will talk about when we get to the uh, handle and ergos portion of this review. A weight coming in at 2.54 ounces, so a nice light knife and a price of $63. So here's the thing with $63. Um, I don't really have much of an issue with it. Um, when you're talking just D2 and G10, what is really going to be the make or break factor for me in terms of whether or not I think it's a, a decent value or a good deal is everything else that comes with it. The quality, um, the action, the execution, and overall, I don't have any issues or any real issue with $63 for D2. I, I, I always wish when I see D2, I always wish they'd use a 14C or a 154CM, something along those lines, because it's been proven with, throughout the industry that that can be used and kept at a price uh, right around that area. So um, it is what it is. Uh, it, it doesn't totally kill my... Uh, my strong liking of this knife and we're gonna go over all that and why here right after some size comparisons look at that tanto that is i tell you what you see a lot of tantos that one just it, it stuck out to me from the moment i saw it and i'm i'm still a fan i still really enjoy the aesthetics of this knife let's compare it to the civivi elementum as well as the kaiser mini critical couple straight edge knives there as you can see uh very much in line with both of them uh the critical just a hair longer towards the end of the knife and uh overall pretty good size comparisons there and i got two more for you in case for some reason you're not very familiar with those knives we've got a couple more that i think it might be this is the kaiser gemini one of my all-time faves in terms of a budget knife as well as the QSP Penguin, another one probably in the uh, Budget Knife Hall of Fame, in my opinion, if there was such a thing. And as you can see, just a little shorter than these two. So not a very big knife, but it's right there in line with a lot of other ones that I think a lot of people can relate to and uh, know just what we got here. So now let's get into it and let's start with this blade, this uh Somewhat unique Tonto design. It's, it's a very versatile Tonto uh, with a screaming sharp edge coming in at 16 thousandths with a very high flat grind. It's almost a full flat grind. So you have some very nice cutting geometry, uh, slicing geometry is the better way to put it. Um, stupid thin blade with a nice 
thin edge that that really doesn't get a whole lot thicker uh, anytime real soon. Uh, it's a it's a very very nice knife that I think is going to deal and uh, handle pretty much any EDC cutting task you have. I mean, sometimes the tip of a tanto is really the only thing that throws it off for some people. Um, I've said plenty of times in the past, I do really enjoy a good tanto. I always tend to lean a little more towards the drop point, but when you get a tanto like this, it has a little more, or actually it has a lot more versatility than just a drop point or even some other tantos. Um, this type of tanto has a secondary tip that works really good for opening packages and things of that nature. So even though the actual tip of the knife is way up here and not much of an aggressive angle, you have this tip down here uh, that is going to carry out those tasks very easily and uh, work very well for you. Um, the top flat up here, I, I call it a flat, but it's not completely flat because as you can see, there is just a little amount of belly, but that's going to work really well for any type of scraping tasks. So if you have some gummed up something on another surface, you know, you can, you can scrape it up with that and it's going to work very well, especially again, going back to that thin blade with the nice razor thin edge. Uh, very nice indeed. Now you also have jimping on this blade that... Um, is not just in one spot. The jimping back here works really good for your, you know, your standard grip, which is really, I think, the way 95 plus percent of people are going to hold this right here. Um, but then you also have this little bit of jimping up here that is very effective and in a very nice spot to where if you want to use the secondary tip to, you know, to open up a package or, you know, maybe do some of that scraping and, and kind of use your finger as a guide of the, what angle you want to hold it on. Or maybe even if you're sharp Opening the end of the knife up here, you know, you, you have a little bit of an extra grip up here at the blade. I really like that. Um, I think it looks good and it actually serves a purpose. It's always nice to find little details that you don't notice right off the bat and they serve a good purpose towards the knife. So that is very useful and very nice to have. Lastly, the flipper tab. We won't talk too much about it just now because we, when we get to the action portion, I, I might gush a little. Um, but this flipper tab brings this knife to life and it's just the perfectly designed flipper tab for this knife. Very happy with the flipper tab. You know, there's so much out there in the EDC and in, in the folding knife world now. Um, when you find just a true flipper that just works this well, it, it's fun and it's nice to come across. Now going into the handle and ergos on this guy, uh, ergos are very much on the neutral side, but also very very, very grippy thanks to this milling pattern that does a lot of things. It looks great and it feels great. Um, the milling pattern combined with the texturing that's kind of pressed onto the scales there. Yeah, you can see I put it in the light. You can see it's got some texturing and it's nothing super special or crazy. It's, it's, it's pretty common texturing. I would almost compare it to a maybe a spider co texturing or it's it, it, it's it's very much if, you, if you've handled a few uh budget knives you felt texturing like this so it's nothing special but when you combine that with the milling look how deep that milling goes um you have an excellent and absolutely phenomenal grip on this knife um that is always nice to have a nice secure grip on your folding knife um the pocket clip Let's, yeah, let's admire this pocket clip because it, especially on a budget knife, you don't see a lot of unique pocket clips on knives these days. And you, you have that here. You have a few things that's unique about it. Um, first, just the overall design is, uh, you know, it's not the co a cookie cutter clip you see on every best tech coming off the line. Um, they put a couple lines here that, you know, really doesn't do much, but I think it looks good. Trailing right off the ends of the cutout up here. Uh, it, it just looks good. It's a nice little detailed touches. Um, they just look nice, but what really looks nice is this right here, fully recessed clip and screws. This is one of those little details <clears throat> that for $63, it really, uh, you know, makes that, uh, adds a little more value, makes that $63 a little easier to swallow, especially when you're talking of a D2 blade. Um, I really like that touch there and they did a really good job of it. This knife carries extremely well. Um, due to one, just the thinness of the overall knife at 443 thousandths in thickness, not a thick knife, not a very wide knife by any means. It just carries very nice in the pocket and the location of this clip too. That is where it really helps the ergo portion of this knife. Because for me, having it pushed a little more towards the front of the handle or, you know, you know what I mean? The front 
up the, the side, whatever. Um, when you put it in your hand, it really helps position the clip closer to the, the, the crease where your fingers meet your palm. And it just feels a lot better as it would to where if it was right in the middle, because then it'd be closer, you know, to like pressing on my callus area and whatnot to where I feel it more. But like this, it just feels really good. And I don't have any issue with it. And that makes me really happy. It's little subtle things like that that, that, that really help give this, this knife an, an oomph in, uh, in likability. And also, also, very nice access to the liner lock. Um, when you have a nice little bit of jimping there on the liner lock and the liner lock's not stuck out too far or anything of that nature, it's just done really well. Just enough of a cutout to access it, break that lock, uh, closes very easily, very smooth. And now we're gonna get into this action. And this, this is why you should really truly consider this knife. If you don't, if you're okay with D2, that right there um, is a very, very, very nice flipping action. Um, it's just a flipper, but it is a damn excellent one. Um, I, like I said, I love the flipper tab. You combine the grip of this knife and just how easy it is to hold it when deploying. Because that's that's not even the case with every knife. You know, you get some knives in there. You, you know, you have to find that just that right position to hold the knife in to get that flip that you want. That real, you know, easy, crisp flip. Um, and it feels like it's real secure in your hand. That's really easy to accomplish the grip with this knife. It just, it falls right in place. The grip, wherever you hold it, it's going to work. And that flipper tab is going to kick that blade out. Um, combined with the grip and bearings, one of the best flippers Best Tech has ever produced. And in my opinion, definitely the best budget flipper just in terms of action. Just in terms of action. Um, I will say I was a huge fan. I'm still a huge fan of the Best Tech Texel. Uh, that's a very, very nice knife. Um, but in terms of action, this is better than the Texel. I know a lot of people raved about the Texel. I know a lot of people really like the Texel, the action being one of the, the bigger reasons of it. Um, I would take this action over the Texel any day. I really love the overall design of the Texel, but I also really am a big fan of this design. It's so different. It looks so good, and the action is just so damn good. So good. Almost kind of like a honey badger, and you know, there wasn't a lot of things to rant and rave about when it comes to honey badger. It was it was a uh, very low-end materials. The design was very mediocre to me, but the action was phenomenal. Um, this has phenomenal action paired with good materials, and fantastic quality, and it, it, it really is. Overall thoughts on this guy are very, very impressive. I wasn't expecting to like it this much. Like I said, though, the design pulled me in and the action made me stay, and I'm staying on board with this. This is definitely a knife I would recommend. Overall, even with the D2, I really, really like this knife. Um, attractive design, decent materials, excellent quality, and phenomenal action. It, it's a package that is going to be a winner um, every time. So not many knives I'd recommend in D2 these days. Uh, this is definitely one of them. The Best Tech Titan. Guys, let me know what you think of this. We'll do a quick little, uh, kind of just a little pan through and uh, take a little closer look at everything. What is that up there? Yeah, some type of dust particle. Um just a very, very nice blade combined with a complimenting handle that just works really, really, really well. Excellent offering from Best Tech coming in at a very affordable price. Best Tech Titan, guys, let me know what you think of this. If you want one, hop on over to White Mountain Knives and pick one up. They have a good amount in stock, a lot of different flavors. Save yourself 10% off with that code. Let me know what you think of the knife. I hope you enjoyed it, and until the next one, I'm out.